bit about them, uh, and also too, we have out in front the CMA, the Canadian Marketing Association, they're also working with us for this event. And they've got a really cool, uh, uh, what is it? What's your title name? What's scorecard? Scorecard, yeah. So that's a really good scorecard that can evaluate where your brand is in the state of mobile. So I encourage you at the break to go try it out. You can either text or scan with the 2D code, and you go through a series of questions, and it will actually tell you what, what mobile media path may be appropriate for your business. It's a nice little uh, litmus test to get yourself started and start embracing mobile. So I really encourage that for you to work with them. You want to raise your hand and introduce yourself really quick, see if they... Hi, the CMA. Sorry. Yeah, the um, signage is in the front line. Okay, so make sure you uh, hook up with her at the break. Talk about the CMA and how the Canadian Market Association can help work with you here locally. Um, so let's talk to the Mobile Marketing Association. We're a global trade group. It's unique and different than, say, the CMA, where the CMA is focused here locally in Canada. The, the Mobile Marketing Association it has a trade tense strategy. We represent all companies from all aspects of the mobile marketing ecosystem on a global basis. So we have a global CEO, four managing directors that manage each of the different regions. So what's nice with our structure is we able have, we're able to see the global reach of mobile, but yet with our teams and our partners like the CMA able to address the regional relevance aspects of mobile, um, as well as our other uh, sponsoring members and partners too. When we look at the MMA, we have five core tenets that we look to build the industry on. We look to promote the industry edu and educate the industry. We do this to help stimulate growth and excitement in the industry. We then also have a number of other activities. We provide research and measurement. Um, our partners and, and um, a valid members of the MMA uh, Comscore will be showing, and Patrick Walsh from, uh, will be sharing with you later today some really exciting data for we also help guide the industry by establishing uh, standards, both standards published by the MMA, published in conjunction with our partners, etc. And then finally, we protect and help advocate the industry on a number of both on a global basis as well as a regional basis. Let's talk about mobile a little bit, though. So when you're looking at marketing in general, our desire is to kind of hit the target. We want to hit that target in terms of delivering value to and with our customers. The challenge with hitting the target, however, is as marketing has grown, and change, it's gotten really complicated. 50, 60 years ago, if we wanted to go market, for instance, in the North America, in the United States market, if we wanted to go and reach 80% of the, uh, say, female population in the marketplace, you could do exactly what Procter & Gamble did. They went and created a soap opera, they threw it up on TV, and they could reach the audience. Very, very difficult to actually get that kind of reach with today's activity. The idea of social and personalization and targeted community and all of these other aspects that are coming into play of marketing are making it a little bit difficult. So really what we need to do, and if we think of as mobile and this desire of meeting our customer, getting you know, going to where, you know, as you know, Wayne Gretzky tells us, you know, you skate to where the puck is. Do you want to know where your customer is going to be and start building and working on that now? And as you'll find throughout the rest of this morning, on a global basis, but also regionally, your customer is mobile. But really, what does that mean? What does that mean to where they're going to be? What does that mean to where they are today? That's what we're going to explore throughout the rest of, uh, the rest of today's discussion. When we take a step back, too, you want to think about our customer base is changing and how we can you know, manage communication with media. So, for example, Grandma's saying the newspaper says that they, they may stop delivering letters on Saturday. You know, the son says, what's a letter? And the granddaughter says, what's a newspaper? The dynamic of our society is changing dramatically. And the reason why it's changing is because of this thing called mobile. I mean, we've got mobile, and you know, I'm here, we're here to tell you today that it's a big deal. I mean, mobile is a really, really big deal. And so much so that if you don't get it right, you're going to go to the great pearly gates. If you don't plan mobile, you're going to really miss a huge opportunity. And mobile needs to be planned. It's not something that you can just stumble upon. And there is a certain level of complications. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of intricacies in enabling that relevant discussion with the consumer. So we're going to talk about planning. So when did all of this start? Well, the first mobile phone was invented in 1947. The first commercial device, the Motorola Brick, which came out in 1983. But we actually had the first text message from Neil, who sent it to his buddy, um, his buddy Richard. He said, Merry Christmas in December 2, 1992. And then from that, we started to create a communication medium to which we could all interact with each other, both on a person-to-person -person basis, but as well as a marketer and the channel has absolutely exploded globally. So worldwide in 2010, we've exchanged about 6.1 trillion text messages. It is by far one of the largest, most pervasive communication media on the planet. In the United States,
United States marketplace alone, we send 6.2 billion text messages a day. In May of 2003, the entire month of May of 2003, we were sharing about 300 million the entire month. Now we're up to 6.2 billion a day. And then something changed. What happened in January 9th, 2007? Anybody know? Come on. I'm not going to bite. Anybody know? January 9th, 2007. Right, exactly. The iPhone was announced. By August 2008, 500 apps in the app store. Jan excuse me, uh, January. By the following year, January 2009, 100,000 apps in the app store. 100,000 apps a year after that. 300,000 apps a year after that. The marketplace explodes, and we start having this unique, per uh, pervasive media that expands mobile to many channels, not just messaging. And in fact, what we can do is, you know, we can have some fun and. You know, when the birds, when the pigs steal our eggs, we can throw ourselves at them like angry birds. Or you can, you know, if you're looking at some of the new rich media advertising that can be enabled on these devices, the, the plane can fly out of the screen. In fact, as I said, there are over 400,000 apps out there. There's over 100 application stores. The WIT, the Wireless Innovation, um, Wireless, uh, WIT <coughs> Connector.org is a group, a Canadian company, that tracks all of the app stores that are out there. And they've got a wonderful report I encourage you to actually go check it out. 